Good morning and welcome to today's live stream here on DreamBank's Facebook page. My name is Andy Frisky. I'm a senior dream curator at DreamBank and I'd like to welcome all who are tuning in. For those of you who maybe are tuning in for the first time, again, thank you so much for, for checking this out. Uh, a little bit about who we are and why we are here. So DreamBank is a free community resource that is located in the heart of Madison, Wisconsin, and we are put on by American Family Insurance. The whole reason why we exist is to help inspire people to pursue their dreams. And when we're not under a pandemic, we typically host right around 40 free events in our space uh, with 11 different event series in total. So anything ranging from uh, business related series, which this event happens to fall into today. We also have family related activities, uh, fitness related activities in the space. Um, we also have career development stuff, learning labs, which is kind of a how-to, one-on-one crafting series as well, just to name a few. But we've done a really good job of pivoting to the virtual space. So we've been putting about uh, right about a one event a day out since uh, the end of March. And uh, again, trying to appeal to as many different dreamers as possible, falling still into those 11 different buckets. Today, though, I'm really excited to introduce our featured uh, presenter, Amber Sweener. So uh, Amber founded Strategic Partners in April of 2015. And after working for years in sales, digital marketing, and in TV advertising, she saw the need in the market for an agency who would be innovative and agile and one who could offer solutions to small businesses to help them be more strategic in their marketing. From the beginning, Amber had the vision of building strategic partners as a heart-centered marketing firm that would work with underserved startups and small and medium-sized businesses, in addition to larger companies. We got our, they got their start by treating their clients as people, and they still do today. They value people and serve them with strategic solutions backed by passion and purpose in their work. I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to you, Amber. Awesome. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And if you are here joining us, please put a comment about where you are joining us from. And uh, I'm able to see the chat over here. So we want this to be engaging, hear your feedback, your comments, your question, and I'll be checking in throughout the presentation. So thank you so much, Andy. Dream Bank is awesome providing these valuable education to audiences and how fun that no matter where you are in the world, you can be joining us. So we are talking about conscious leadership, how to grow a profitable business rooted in purpose. And it's awesome that no matter where you're at in your journey, you can take things that we're talking about today and start applying them. And we're going to get into that about whether you are a solopreneur, you work for a company, you have a large existing company. We're going to talk about how you can apply these practices, no matter your stage in the growth journey, the size of your business. And to kick it off, I want to just start with a story and have you sit back a little and think about this story and think about what comes up when you hear the story. So imagine that we have two lodges in Costa Rica. The first lodge has grown to 50 rooms. It's a beautiful location. When you book to go visit this beautiful setting, you get a confirmation email that's telling you what you can expect upon arrival. And you get there, it's beautiful, you're greeted by management, it's owned by an investor group, but they have local management who tells you about all the meals that you can have at the resort and how you can book tours with the resort staff. You go to your room, there's another book there telling you about the meals that you can order from the resort and the tours that you can book. It's a beautiful time and you go home. So a trip that you'll definitely remember. And the second lodge, very similar in that they're in a beautiful location in Costa Rica. However, when you get your booking confirmation, there's a little extra. There's some information in there that talks about packing for a purpose for the community that you're coming to so that if you have extra space in your luggage, if you want to bring something to help support the local community, it tells you how you can do that. When you arrive, you are greeted most likely personally by the owners who live locally, are from locally, they operate the business. There's a big photo of their family behind the check-in desk. And they talk to you about how they have sustainability efforts. They invite you to do their 7 a.m. farm tour where you can actually see the food that's being produced, milking the cows that they then themselves make into the cheese that you'll enjoy for breakfast, the eggs that they produced right there on the farm, the jam that they make themselves. In the room, there's also a book talking about food options, but it also showcases local restaurants and, and other area businesses that you can support. 
and also explains to you other tours and things that you can do. And they offer to facilitate helping to connect you with a local guide if you want to do a tour. But there's also a story about the family, about their purpose, about sustainability. Then you come to breakfast and you're pleasantly surprised because in this beautiful viewing room that was not shown online when you made your reservation, you are pleasantly surprised to see that you can enjoy your breakfast while watching the birds come in, the tropical birds. And this is just really like a hidden gem because it was just putting a cherry on the top, something extra that was unexpected you didn't expect from the experience. Again, the family serves you breakfast, they check on you, they're talking with you throughout your stay and you leave upon finishing your stay, you leave and you recognize that you had a beautiful experience, but you also really formed a connection with that family that was running that business. And you really got a sense of what it means to have a sustainable eco lodge. So two different lodges, beautiful experiences, but during the pandemic, let's just imagine which lodge do you think has a better chance of making it. If one of them has a better chance of making it when the pandemic hit, obviously this hurt so many businesses, particularly tourism. So lodge one beautiful location. They provide a great experience. However, really everything they keep isolated to buying it from their lodge. It's owned by an investment group or lodge two beautiful location. They've shown you how their sustainable efforts have built into the land rather than, tearing down the land and they've shown you, they've taken you on the farm tour. They've shown you how the food is made. They've made that personal connection with the family and the purpose behind that, that lodge experience. So it's not that one is right or wrong or one is better or worse than the other, but this is in a sense, a real life example. And I have a, a friend's business with an eco lodge like this. They're called Casitas Tenorio down in Costa Rica. And they are a family run eco lodge. They started with two casitas. My friend Pippa and her husband Donald. Pippa is Australian and Donald is Costa Rican. And they're an example of a business that has put purpose into everything that they do. And I share this example because, regardless of whether you're an individual, you're a big company, you're international, you're local. There are a number of ways that you can be a more conscious leader and bring more purpose into your work. And it's been a challenging year for many businesses and particularly some businesses like tourism. But what's so beautiful is their business, Casitas Tenorio, had people show up wanting to buy gift cards to make advanced purchases, asking what can we buy? How can we make a donation? And when you look at an example like this, comparing lodge experiences, like if you think about yourself in places that you've traveled, when times get tough like this, are you thinking about a beautiful hotel you stayed at and it was a great hotel? Or are you thinking about a great hotel you stayed at where you made a connection with the owners who were so passionate and purposeful behind that business? And Pip and Donald, they have purpose in their business because it's what they believe in. They truly believe in sustainability. It's just what they do. But it's been beautiful to see that in a time when they're facing the biggest challenges, hopefully that they ever face in the time of their business, it's amazing to look at how customers and community can remember that purposeful impact that staying at their lodge has made in their life. They have an amazing amount of repeat business. And um, here's a couple photos. So I was able to travel there recently and uh, able to to do so safely with social distancing. And here's some photos of this experience and how you can see that they're doing farm to table. You can actually go milk the cow and, and see how the food is made and the viewing room where you can see the birds come in. And they also have invested in buying a plot of land to help bring back the tapir population. So it's called Tapir Valley. Tapir are these cute, funny looking animals that unfortunately are endangered due to loss of habitat. And again, this is them living their purpose for sustainability where they've intentionally chose to buy a plot of land and keep it private and intentional where you can only visit this property with a tour guide so that, uh, it helps bring back the population. And 
I share this because purpose can shine through in several ways. And our goal today is that you consider where you're at and where you can start bringing in more purpose. And does that look like showing people behind the scenes, like how Casita Tenorio is showing people the farm tour? Does that look like how what you're presenting in your marketing so that people can understand more why you do what you do? Does that look like defining the mission statement if it hasn't been defined or if it's time to redefine it so that you can unite your team around that shared purpose? So building your process within purpose and around purpose doesn't need to be something that you have to start at point one and then two and then three. The beautiful thing is that wherever you are, you can engage in this material and integrate and infuse a bit more purpose into what you're doing. So I don't want you to feel that no matter where you're at or if you're like, oh shoot, I need to start over at the beginning. I need to blow up my business and start over. That's not the case. Wherever you're at in your journey, you can be integrating purpose and you can start that today, no matter where you are. And I'm going to show you real life examples of customers who've had successful businesses and through the years, how they have looked at how to be more purposeful. So you're here because you already believe that there is more to business than just selling things and trading dollars, right? Profits rooted in purpose. And you're here probably because you're either looking for clarity about what your personal purpose is or your business purpose. And you're looking to get into greater alignment with what that purpose is so that it can flow all the way through and allow you to be confident in being profitable with that purpose. Often, heart-centered entrepreneurs that we work with, sometimes they can get wrapped up in wanting to have a purposeful business but getting mixed up in and questioning if that means that they can be profitable. And what I hope to show you today is that, in fact, it's necessary to be profitable in order to keep doing your purpose driven work. Right. Leading with purpose does not mean that we need to feel that we have to that we have to do give back or that you owe anyone anything. That's not what purpose is about. Purpose is about looking for that united win, win, win between your company, your staff, the product and the market. Leading with purpose is still about providing a solution that the market wants, but having that extra purpose piece, that extra piece that feels amazing to do business with your company with purpose behind it. So they're getting more than just a transactional experience. They're getting a transformational experience. So I want to check in with anyone who's joining us. If you are joining us, please put in the chat. Let me know where you're from. And if you're watching the replay, I want you to comment on the replay as well and tag me so I can come back and answer any questions and engage with you. So usually there's like five different types of people who are joining these conversations. So one, two, three, four or five. So I want you to put in the chat if you're joining us because I want to be able to see who's here or if you're watching the replay. So if you are beginning your entrepreneur journey or aspiring, give me a one. If you're at the very, very, very beginning, of thinking about being an entrepreneur. Number two, you are a full-time, maybe solopreneur working for yourself. Give me a three. If you are a leader of a company, you have a team. Four, if you are employed somewhere, you're here to learn. Five, if it's some other reason, you're not totally sure, but you're here. So I want to be able to get a, a read on live and post after the fact. Share that in the comments so that we get a sense of who's here and where you are in your journey. So one is the very beginning. Two, you're full-time solopreneur. Three, you are leading a team. Four, you're employed somewhere. And five is some other reason. Um, I'm wondering if I'm seeing the comments. Oh, oh my goodness. Thank you so much to someone that reminded me that... Um, Yay, I see your comments. Hey, for a few minutes, I thought I was here by myself, but I'm so happy to have people here joining us. Yay. Oh, fabulous. Okay, now we got to keep going. That's funny, you guys, because I was looking at the wrong tab and I was like, wow, these people are quiet today. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Um, I apologize. I'm trying to figure out how to add back comments, but you know what? That's okay. I don't see how I can comment back to you, but I'm going to verbally respond to you. So fantastic. Looks like we have a great variety of people. Love that. Casitas Tenorio. I will add that to the chat at the end of the conversation when I can figure out how to add my own comment to the chat. So I apologize. 
that um, at the moment I don't know how to do that, but I'm so happy that I know who you are. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. Now that I know there's people in the room, I want to invite you to engage today. And here's how you're going to do that. In the chat box, when you hear something that's like, ooh, that's some something interesting for me to consider or ooh, that's something I haven't wanted to look at, but I, I want to, but I'm a little bit afraid. Resistance is opportunity. This is something I love to embrace. So if you feel a little bit of a, a zing, you're going to write zing in the chat box. And a zing does not mean it's bad. It means, ooh, that's something that I've maybe been avoiding that I actually want to lean into because resistance is opportunity. And that's something that maybe I'm just fearful of, but I actually want to learn about that, put that into motion, put that into action. And rock on, because I'm a rocker, rock on. You're going to put rock on. If you're like, yes, that is me. I'm committed to that. Heck yeah, that resonates. I love that. So you're going to give me a zing or a rock on, and that's how I'm going to know where we're at and what is resonating with you. So got it? Okay, so give me some zings. Give me some rock on so we know that our chats are working here. All right. Fantastic. Okay, today you're invited to consider how this business allows you to fulfill your personal mission. So if you are the business leader, co-owner, thinking of building a business, and even if you're actually not the business owner and you work somewhere, look at how the business or where you work allows you to fulfill your personal mission. We're going to consider that, right? And so what that can look like as the leader is when you get clear in what you are here to do in this world, it's possible to do that through your business. It doesn't mean that you necessarily have to because you might have other passions or places that really fulfill your purpose. But I bet that you're here for a reason because you want to feel more purposeful in your business. And if you are an employee and you work somewhere, you can think about this through the lens of what are your values and that really matters to you and what kind of workplace can you work that aligns with those values, right? So that could be that you really prioritize and value family and you want to never miss a child's activity after school activity. And so that's aligning with a company that allows you that flexibility or has that shared value for having a life outside of work. So there's ways that you can look at what's your purpose, what really matters to you, and how are you growing your business to be in alignment with that? Or if you're a worker, really getting intentional about the what matters to you so that you can find the right workplace so that you're aligned on purpose. Because purpose matters. Purpose brings us more joy. It brings more flow. It's so much more fun to build a business when you have purpose at the foundation of it, right? So the next question you're invited to consider is how does your business serve the world? thinking about that bigger purpose, right? So we're looking at how does this positively fulfill and impact me and how does it positively serve the bigger purpose and serve the world? So these are two main questions that you're going to be invited to consider in our conversation. And to give you a little background on me, for those of us who haven't met before, and I see some familiar faces and I'm so happy to see those, but I also see some new people in the chat. Love that. And so a little bit on me. So I am a heart-centered, soulful strategist. And through my work and weavings and following my internal thread, I've come to that place of really understanding that my purpose in the world is to help people uncover and live their truth personally, along with in their businesses. Because my top guiding principle is that your truth is the path to personal freedom. So this is work that I've done over the years to get clear in this. And professionally, oh, before professionally, well, this is one of my professions. I'm also a musician. So really bringing that creative side to life into my work. Professionally, I, my background is in brand strategy. Here's our fabulous team. And we started as strategic partners marketing. I added a coaching side of the business impact academy. And now we're rebranding and we're becoming soul seed. So professionally as a brand strategist, I came to understand that the businesses that were really committed to growth and to longevity are those that were in touch with their purpose. So the work that we do is help companies and entrepreneurs get really clear on what's your purpose, because that allows you to then do more authentic marketing. And so that's why I'm here talking about purpose, right? Because our mission is to help elevate heart-centered leaders and help companies grow. And in order to do that, we need to get to the root of why your business exists. There's a lot of different ways to grow a business, 
but it's a lot more meaningful to grow that from a place of purpose. And that's what we as a company choose intentionally to help those companies who really have a purpose element. We choose to partner with those companies. So we're becoming soul seed. Our mission is to elevate conscious leaders and companies through intentional growth strategy and marketing that's born from the soul of the brand. It's born from that purpose-driven place. And this is how we help companies achieve profits rooted in purpose. So the lens that I'm speaking through today is looking at being someone who started a business at zero and grew it to over a million in four years. And we work with companies from teams of one to 20 to 50 to several hundred, local all the way to global. The common thread about those who are most successful are those that care about getting aligned on their purpose and the reason why their company exists. And then we can put the strategy behind it. And so that's the lens I'm talking through is real life walking that journey, of helping companies grow, scale, become more profitable. So you're gonna gain today more clarity in your purpose, awareness about how and where you can get more purposeful. And we wanna open some creativity for you to open up ideas and think about Ooh, like what sounds exciting? What's a rock on that I really want to do? I really want to engage that. All right, here's our outline. We're going to go through four core areas. Finding the heart of your brand by finding you. We're going to talk a bit about you, right? The foundation of this work is you. You're the leader. You're the, the person that works at, at, if you work somewhere as an employee, but really getting purposeful, it's got to feel good to your purpose, right? So taking a moment to look at what matters to you, what are your values? The next is looking at the actual business model. Why does that business exist? And there's five areas we're gonna to touch on that I believe you can integrate purpose. And there's probably more, but there's five that we tend to see that companies sometimes come in and they're clear in one or two of them. But the cool thing is you can get clear in all five of them and really have purpose thriving throughout your organization. Then we're going to look at how to be less transactional and more transformational, because the more transformational you get, the more that you flow purpose in what you do. And um, I'm going to show you how to be less transactional, more transformational, which allows you to have awareness to where you're living your purpose and where you're just treating business as something where you're trading time for dollars. Because if you're just doing that, you become a commodity, you become a transaction business and you're here because you want to thrive in more purpose. And then we're gonna look at examples of specific impact models that'll maybe inspire some ideas for you on what you can do in your business. So I wanna hear in the chat, is there anything else that you're hoping to gain or learn today? Anything at all? So while we're not together in person, in face-to-face, -face, we are here in person. You're all right there in the chat box, right? And I want this to still bring as much of that as possible, where if you have a question or an insight or something you're looking to learn or take away by the end of the today, please uh, put that in the chat box so that I can capture that. Okay, and I'm checking out your comments. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, Okay. All right. Awesome. We've got some feedback that people are looking for how to make a profit, but still also feel like you're doing give back. Fantastic. I'd love to have at least two more shares. I'm going to make some notes here. So let's see. Confidence, make money while doing give back. And I'm just checking in with, uh, my host here to see if there's a way I can chat with you guys. Okay. Keep adding uh, great strategies. Ooh, strategies for coming up with a business name that really encompasses the many ways I can be of service to clients. Fantastic. Uh, fantastic. And so, Oh, I have a great story for you that we're going to get into here about business name. I'm really feeling in alignment. So keep putting, keep adding to the chat anything you're hoping to gain or learn today. And I'm going to check back on that. Love it. OK, so finding the heart of your brand by finding you. And this is going to help answer some of these questions right here is that a starting point, excuse me, a starting point to this journey 
is really going inward and evaluating what your purpose is and what your values are. <clears throat> the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. This is the definition of purpose. It's the reason for which something is done or created. It's the reason why it matters. It's the reason, right? And when we're looking to more confidently grow our businesses, often, well, confidence comes from doing. So first of all, we've got to have progress over perfection. You've got to trust yourself enough and step into it. And then you learn by doing. But it's really the more aligned that you get to what what flows from you. It's about leaning into that, not trying to be all things to everyone, but instead leaning into what your values are and what's aligned for you. And it becomes easier to grow your business more confidently from that place because it's true for you. That's when you take off that mask and you stop trying to do all the things that you've been told to do. And instead you learn to make that shift of leading from your purpose, leading from your soul seed. And at first it can be challenging to do that because we feel fear about being our true selves, but through that process and growing, it actually then becomes easier because it's actually a lot easier to be ourselves than be a fake version of who we are, right? I mean, if anyone's ever like worked somewhere or had a friend group where you had to put on a different kind of fake face or alter ego to go to that job or to go around that friend group, who's with me? I know that has felt exhausting and I actually think it feels a lot easier to be who we are, be our authentic selves. And so it's looking for that reason for which something is done or created. And that reason flows from our truest selves, our truest selves, the thing that we're most passionate about. So uh, a great book to reference, Viktor Frankl is someone who survived the concentration camps and um, wrote about and created a psychotherapy theory about what it takes to find one's purpose. And the root of that, and he shares in his book, is that people who find meaning even in adversity are people that constantly strive to find purpose, where people that he said saw that as the difference between some of those who survive hardship and some of those who don't. And he says that you can uncover purpose in through three ways by creating a work or doing a deed. So many of us here, we uncover our purpose by actively creating the work. And that's what I was getting at, which is this fun kind of loop that keeps going, which is, I think my purpose is this, so I'm gonna create this product, I'm gonna make this thing, I'm gonna sell this thing. And then you learn more and you go deeper about your purpose. And that's why we just have to be on the journey. We have to learn by doing, we have to have progress over perfection because we get in touch with our purpose by creating the thing or doing it. The next way we can come to our purpose is by experiencing something or encountering someone, right? Has anyone here ever had that um, really life-changing experience because of something you experienced, maybe a life uh, altering, life-changing experience or a profound trip you went on, um, maybe volunteering somewhere and it really shift your whole perspective on life. And a third way that Viktor Frankl says that we can really uncover purpose is by the attitude we take toward unavoidable suffering is how we can live in purpose. And I interpret that as trusting that good or bad, any resistance that we face, any adversity is actually helping us in our path to becoming more of our true selves and living more in our purpose. So here's a few, those are a few ways that we can come toward to personal purpose. So I'd like to give you tactical, tangible, things that you can get out your pen and paper and actually do an exercise and see for yourself. Now, this is a pretty common graph that many of you may have seen before, and it's effective and powerful. So to find purpose and meaning, feel free to take a picture of this or you know, draw it on your paper. A really simple but powerful exercise is to make the three charts. And you list out everything that gives you a sense of purpose or that you enjoy right? You put all that and you can make it either as a graph or make it in circles. Because what we want to do is explore these three areas and see where the, the middle ground is. So everything that gives me a sense of purpose or I enjoy, everything I'm good at, because you can be good at a lot of things. But what we want to do is see where that connecting is, because sometimes the thing you're good at doesn't mean that it gives you the sense of joy, right? So everything I'm good at and then what the world needs. What does the world need? 
So you're going to want to take time to brainstorm this after our conversation today and see what comes through for you. This can really help you find your personal purpose and meaning. Now, to add a layer to that, for those of us and thinking about this through the context of business, it's the same three questions, but you want to add a fourth circle, which is what I get paid well for or what we get paid for. Because doing this helps you see this is what i enjoy this is what i'm good at this is what the world needs this is what we can get paid well for and it helps you look at where's that middle point right because sometimes we see in businesses they're like well we get paid well for this but i don't enjoy it and i don't think it's making a difference in the world so we want to make a shift away from that and we want to find what's in alignment what's the thing that we know is serving a difference and that we feel good about and we can make money that's the sweet spot of where you can find your profits rooted in purpose. Yeah. Okay. So I'm getting some good feedback about um, progress over perfection really resonates. Fantastic. And how can I concisely share my purpose? Great. So I'll keep weaving those in through our conversation today as well. So after purpose, we really want to look into values. Values are how you live your life. And often when people feel resistance or that they're out of alignment, often that's because the things that you truly value is not how you're spending your time or building your business or doing your work, right? And that's when a shift needs to be made. So three powerful questions to take a screenshot, write these down and reflect on these. This will help you get clearer in what your purpose is so that you can clearly succinctly state it. So rather than looking at a list of values and being like, oh, those sound good, Instead, values are something that are uncovered. So instead, I want to invite you to think big and kind of look at these open questions and journal about this and see what comes through. Three questions. What are beliefs that you have about how you desire to live your life? What are those beliefs? Anything that's true for you. This is about being judgment free with yourself and just being honest and saying, these are the beliefs that I have about how I want to live my life. Allow yourself to honestly journal that without putting restrictions of like, well, but I have responsibilities to these people. Well, my job restricts me in this way. No, you just want to get out that honest thought with yourself about how do you desire to live your life? The second one is what are things you often find yourself saying about how the world could or should be? If you always find yourself saying, if the world would just be like this, if people could just do this, what are some of those things? And the third is, what are things that you're never okay with? Often when we look at our anti-values, the things that we're strictly not okay with, it can help reveal truly what our values are. So it's important to take that opportunity and explore what's revealed, right? Because this can help show you when you get clear in your values. For me, it came through, through doing this work over the years, authenticity, freedom, personal freedom, it helped me get clear in going down this path toward our rebrand. It's helped me in every single way in how I'm recruiting the kind of clients we work with. We set that stage with them that we're aiming to create a container for safety to be your true authentic self because authenticity came to the top as one of my top values. And so that's how you connect these dots and how it's going to play a part in your business. So you want to consider what's revealed. And I want to share... Um, I want to just share an example of a client to show you how values can actually look in action. So you can be thinking about, OK, if I have this value, what does that actually mean for the business that I'm growing? So this is Nicole, phenomenal, amazing woman who has uh, a massage business that she grew into a women's wellness center. They are evolving into becoming the nest. So she's made that transition from being a solopreneur trading time for dollars, being the sole person doing all the massages to now growing a team and growing. And we define together that her values are connection through human touch. She's a healer. She believes in that connection through human touch. This comes from having premature boys who were just a few pounds when they were born. They were really miracle babies. And she uh, was able to deepen connecting with them through learning mas infant massage, compassion, harmony, judgment free. These are her values. So we looked at how can she keep growing her impact and purpose in a way that allows to still create connection through touch, 
but doesn't rely solely on her being the only person doing 30 massages a week because that's beautiful and wonderful, but that means that she can only impact this many people. And over the course of a few years, this led to creating an online infant massage course, right? You see how these values now are having a bigger impact, a global impact, but it's rooted in her purpose, her purpose to help people create connection and touch. And the way that it looked is by creating an online course that people can buy as gifts for new parents, especially in this time of isolation. She launched the program this year during COVID. And this is a way that her impact and purpose now has a global scale because it's teaching people how to do massage for themselves at home. The other way is by building team, right? By shifting some stories around what it means to be profitable because actually by her growing her team, it allows them to live more purpose and have a bigger impact. So I wanted to share that to help show you that when you get clear about your values, sometimes we get stuck and we think, well, if my values are connection with humans. How can I stop doing one-to-one -one services and create a way of reaching people globally, right? We tell ourselves a self story that, that we're working against our values, but really it's more deeply in alignment with our values. And that's why this journey of purpose, it can start with really getting clear on what are your values and what do you want for your life? And then looking at, well, what are ways that I can bring that those values and purpose into my business that I can still make money while living the life that I want? Because, you know, you may or may not want to say, well, I want a single location and I want to see 30 people a week. You might have some, you might want freedom, uh, location independence. And so you want to look at a model for how do you expand your reach in a way that allows you to create new products, offerings, potentially shift or grow your business. So we're going to keep moving to point number two, and we're going to look at the purpose from which your profits flow and look at the mission of why your business exists. And you may have multiple businesses or you may have different iterations. You may evolve your business and the beautiful thing is that you can have multiple facets to your purpose and you might say this business served this purpose and now I'm evolving because I've deepened into my purpose. I now understand my purpose more uh, more deeply. And so you want to examine that mission of why your business exists and it might be time to evolve that. You might be ready for a rebrand, a deepening, a pivot. It might be ready to launch something new. And there's five areas we're going to touch on. Again, I mentioned you can really thrive in purpose from yourself personally, your driving force, the culture, the impact for clients, global purpose, and or direct like recipients or benefit from your work. So the first question is, why does the business exist? And I want to encourage you to think really big about this, right? There's a typical formula for developing a mission statement, but I want you to be able to sit back with pen and paper and allow it all to come through and say, why does my business exist? And I want you to put down everything that you think of, anything that comes to you. This will probably be a great journaling example uh, or uh, homework for you to do after the fact. So I'm assigning you all homework to do this after the, the call is get out all the reasons about why your business exists. This can help you see where you actually have more purpose flowing through a lot more places than you might realize. And it can also help you get clearer and clearer. There was a question about, well, how do I succinctly state my purpose? Well, it starts with just allowing it all to come out and then looking at it and then narrowing and then aligning. Okay, these are my values. This is why my business exists. This looks like this core thread. But if we don't allow ourselves to go big and just get it all out there, it's impossible to see what's coming through. So just a couple examples. It's kind of one of the most widely known right now. We all know this person, Elon Musk. I think he's now the richest person in the world. I found this meme funny from a few years ago. 1999, I designed financial websites. 2000, you could say 2021, I design whatever I want. Okay. Here's why I like this example. That Elon started in tech. He started building an online solution. And then he used that money and he went deeper in his purpose to launch his next companies that are focused very clearly on three things that unite to his purpose and what he wants to do with his money, his time, talents. And they are all related to long term survival of humanity. All of his companies now and all of his efforts are to address climate risk, single planet dependency risk and human species extinction risk. And so I share this because often it's a journey. 
coming more into our purpose journey, it might look like different businesses or it might look like different iterations of business. And I want to invite you to embrace that, to allow that, to not be afraid that how you started is how you need to end. It's a journey, right? A journey means we're going to journey. We're going to have changes. We're going to encounter opportunities and challenges along the way. And I think this is such a fabulous example to show this is a person who was in the tech space and then he created a company that eventually became PayPal to go from that to now, um, as we know, biggest investor, now CEO in Tesla, founder of SpaceX. So this is to help show you, doesn't matter if, if you're going to have as big of a company as Elon Musk, doesn't matter about the size of the company. The point is following that thread of your purpose and what becomes possible when you just start you get your business going, you figure out what the purpose is, and you might be on that thread for forever and ever, or it might look like an evolution or shifting in how you work, but it's still aligned to your core purpose. So Oprah shares in her book that um, a story about learning from her grandma about like how to hand wash clothing. And the grandma was saying, you need to learn this so that you can take care of yourself. And in Oprah's mind, she was saying, actually, I'm going to have a different life that I'm not going to be out here growing food and washing my clothing. I have a different life for me. And then um, another key moment was she was a reporter, an anchor, and was told that she was too much, kind of too bubbly, too conversational. But she had the opportunity to interview someone more story style for a segment. It was different than just like reporting hard news. And it was in that moment that she recognized I'm made for something different. And it's those moments that we can have fear because we've chosen a certain business or chosen a certain career. And we're like, but I chose that I'm going to do this thing. I said I was going to be a nurse. I said I was going to be a marketer. I said I was going to be a teacher. I said I was going to be this. But actually, I feel that there's it's meant to show up a different way in the world. Right. And this is how Oprah started as a journalist. But she was meant to be more of an interview storyteller. And so it was making that step to say, this no longer looks like reporting the evening news. This looks like something different. And it's those moments that we want to really listen to because it's those moments that we feel and we hear our purpose speaking to us. The, it's only the, the fear of our minds because our ego is there to protect us is what stops us because our brain doesn't yet know if we're going to be successful in the next thing because our brain doesn't have a proof story for it. So this is where that it's important to trust that internal knowing and trust that moment when you feel something, trust that when you hear that voice, many of us have probably had that in our journey where we've had that voice come to us at one point in time. And that's the moment when you can really get into your purpose. So, um, okay. Just checking in on comments. Yay. You're all still here with me. Woohoo! So I just want to give a little bit of, um, uh, on this point about finding, from where your profits flow in your business to show you to not be afraid about your evolution. So I started my company, Strategic Partners Marketing, and we knew that we did brand strategy and marketing, but I had a sense that there was something more. It was about authenticity. It was about people being their true selves. Then I started coaching people under Amber Della, and they were the same company, two different arms. Then Amber Della became Impact Academy. By the way, this happened all within four years, okay? Now, coming from the brand person, it's really, you want to get clear in your brand and you want to get clear in your brand identity and then grow it. And I did not want to shame or judge myself for trusting that I was going down the path of my purpose journey. And the other beautiful thing is we continued growing and becoming more and more profitable and continued growing team all the while. And I share that because often people are afraid of change. I went through those stories, those stories of, well, I can't shift my name or shift like our mission statement because of how is that going to look to the market? But I trusted that I was actually getting more aligned rather than trying new things. So what I want to encourage you is this is about getting more aligned. It's not about that you're throwing a bunch of spaghetti at the wall and trying different things that is very different than getting intentionally aligned. And where this journey has led us is now coming to that we're rebranding as Soul Seed. And Soul Seed encompasses four divisions of the company that are growing. They all support the same mission to help elevate conscious leaders and companies to getting into their authenticity and truth, right? We have marketing and brand strategy. We have coaching, speaking retreats. 
eventually we're going to have products like journals that help people really uncover their their purpose and their their intentional path and um an investment side soul seed ventures that we're exploring a model of investing in companies that align with being purpose driven and i share this again to show you progress over perfection right i started at zero we got to over a million in four years we keep growing we keep growing and it's because we've trusted this path of purpose. So no matter where you are, you trust that seed and you just keep going. And that's how you get to the root of the profits from which your um, the profits, the purpose that then flows your profits. Right. So five areas you can consider personal purpose. My personal purpose is that it was important to me to be able to show up as my authentic, true self. I had this belief that. I wanted to overcome that said, well, people won't take me seriously in business if I'm also a creative because I'm a front woman in a metal band. And I went on a journey and said, I need to trust that there's no amount of money that's worth sacrificing my truest self. So I have personal purpose in my business, which is I personally want to be my authentic self and help show others that they can be their authentic selves. And the funny thing is that it worked. We did get business. We continue growing. It is possible to be your true self. Right. Another way you can consider your purpose is what is your purpose around your culture or work environment? And for me, I knew that I wanted to have an environment that promoted um, authenticity and fun and flexibility that trusts people to be self leaders. And so there, there was clear purpose behind the culture that we're developing. So again, I want you to consider where you already have clarity and purpose out of these five areas and where you might want to leave and work on instilling more purpose, where, where you have a gap. So the first is clarity of personal purpose. The next is clarity of what's your culture and the purpose of your work environment. What is the purpose that you're hoping to provide and for your team the purpose that you all unite on. The next one is customer impact. And often in starting a business, this is a phenomenal, this is a really important place to start with. Because if we're not serving a customer, a market, we don't have a business, right? Purpose is not about saying, well, come support my business because I donate money to XYZ charity. Purpose is about solving a need in the market but also having that be a win-win-win for a bigger global purpose. And we're going to talk about that in the next section. So Cause is an amazing local business owner. Um, Cause has shared several times about um, their journey in having um, really uh, her business is rooted in purpose. She shared her story that when her mother was passing, her mother recognized the help that they got from Meals on Wheels and area providers. And her mom said, I wish that I would have done more good in the world. And Kaz then started Rosie's Cafe and Bakery with that intention of doing more good in the world and how they provide food for homeless shelters and Meals on Wheels. And they employ people um, through some programs, people that maybe otherwise wouldn't be able to have gainful employment. And so when the pandemic hit, their business was, it was extremely challenging. And Kaz, although she had fear, she stepped in and said, I'm going to step in and do this a coaching program with you. While there's all these people saying to hold my money back, she trusted that there was a purpose there. Her years and years and years as a baker and being a heart-centered, loving woman, and they bake everything from scratch. They bake it from love. She just had a, a, a little bit more confidence and trust in that was a little bit louder than the voice of fear. And what this impact has been now for our customer is that they have more than survived through the pandemic. When unfortunately many other similar businesses have gone out of business, they are seeing some of their most profitable weeks in the business. They've been able to keep people employed and in fact, innovate new offers and flavors that the market loves, right? And this was about looking at what can I provide to the market that they need and want this time? She has phenomenal cinnamon rolls. I should have put a picture. It will make you drool and make you want to buy one. And it gives people that comfort and a taste and a sense of home. It's all made from scratch. It's made with love. So this is the impact that we have with customers by intentionally focusing on a heart-centered business that we say, look, if you are committed to your purpose, we are going to help you 
grow it, be successful, make money. So now cause can do more give back, can employ more people, can do more for Meals on Wheels, can bring more love to the community through her products. So you really want to look at what is the impact that really your product or services has for your customers. Then there's global purpose. Globally, are you addressing climate change? Are you address, uh, addressing hunger? So part of our global purpose is global healing by helping individuals get clear in their authenticity and purpose, because we believe that's a path to more global healing. When people are empowered to be their true self, it solves a lot of the world's challenges. So that's like the real big global purpose vision that we have to give you something to think about. You might have a global purpose and then impact partners thinking about who benefits from our model, not just our customers, not just our staff, but for us as an example, and here's a picture from Dream Bank being there in person with you all last year. By us doing what we do and by being profitable as a company, I am able to do more work um, at a different rate or on as a, as a part of my purpose with several organizations, local and international, as a trainer, training other businesses to be successful. And we're able to do more community talks and things like this. But I wouldn't be able to do this if I didn't figure out how to make my business profitable because we've got to make money as a business. So I need We need to pay all of our people. And so our way that we have impact and give back are through organizations that we do training and speaking with and that we do either at low cost, no cost, things that otherwise wouldn't be possible. So those are five things to think about, about why your business exists for you personally, for your work culture, impact for your customers, global impact, and then other partners that benefit. So if anyone wants to share, oh, and Cause is on the call, that's fabulous. Yay, I love that we celebrated Cause and Rosie's Cafe in Monona. No matter where you are, you can, uh, within a few months, you're going to be able to order products from Rosie's Coffee Bar. So I'd love to have you share if anything has come through, just any clarity, if you had any um, zing or rock on, if you recognize just by thinking about those five areas, did you get clarity in one of those areas where you didn't realize before how much purpose you had? Whether personal, team, impact for your clients, global purpose or other beneficiaries please put that in the comments if anything came through share where you got some clarity around purpose that you might not have realized you had before and then we're going to keep going to make sure we have time for questions at the end so a third step to this work is considering how your business can be more transformational and less transactional this can help you recognize where you're operating in purpose and where you're just doing business to get things sold because that's not purpose driven. If you're just trading time for dollars and you're just trying to get the money, you're not coming from a place of purpose. So I want to invite you to do a little pop quiz. Yay. People are narrowing their purpose as you speak. Fantastic. Okay. Pop quiz. Think of your favorite service provider. You don't need to put this part in the chat. Think of your favorite service provider and why are they your favorite? Could be a local dentist or someone who takes care of your children or a maintenance person, hairstylist, a coach, a mentor, service provider. Think your favorite service provider. And I'd love to hear in the comments, why are they your favorite? Who comes to mind? What companies or individuals? You don't need to say who, but just say why. What are some reasons when you think about your favorite service provider? What are some reasons that they're your favorite? I know when I think about mine, they make me feel judgment. They make they they're judgment free. They make me feel safe and comforted to be my whole self. I love. Oh, I'm so grateful. I'm thinking about someone. She makes me feel safe. That's why one of mine is my favorite. Someone said the connection we have. Yeah. It's not that they're cheap, right? I doubt that any of you are going to say, oh, they're my favorite because they're cheap. No, because when we have a brand rooted in purpose, that equals value. People pay for value. People feel aligned on value. There's something bigger at play than just money, right? And so I want you to think about in your business that when you 
are leading with and delivering value, you're becoming more transformational and less transactional. That is how you can lean into something bigger at play than just money. Being a transformational company means that you view the work of the company as serving a higher purpose. It's not just how much money can the stakeholders put in their pocket, right? You view, view the growth of the team as an investment, not an expense. It's a paradigm shift. Now, in order for that investment to be successful, yes, you still want to be clear in the mission, have KPIs, have goals. This doesn't mean that we're being all woo woo and like kumbaya, we all love each other. Like you still need to have boundaries and goals, but you're still aligned on a purpose and a mission. So being transformational and serving a higher purpose still means having goals and having revenue goals, but it's just shifting the lens at which you look at things through. And I want to walk you through a few traits of companies, leaders, employees. So a transactional company is more likely to strictly seek competitive advantages, advantages by maximizing profits, looking for how they can get the cheapest product, staff, their operations are driven by the bottom dollar versus a transformational company is willing to invest in the development of their team and culture because they actually know that in the long run, that's going to create a more a healthier work environment, more purpose fueled, happier and will lead to more profits. Sometimes people don't think they don't believe that it can lead to more profits, but it does. I'm proof of that. Many of our clients are proof of that, that you can reduce turnover. You can attract and retain the best talent. The studies are out there. You can look at them, find them all day long online that workers are looking for more than just a paycheck. Many of the best workers are looking to align on values and purpose. A transactional company is driven by productivity where a transformational company is driven by alignment to the company culture, the bigger picture, that value that you can't put a price on that, having people show up who really care at the next level. They're bringing something extra special to the team. And even your sales and marketing, if you're more transactional, you might be focused on how do I just get the sales done or a sales gimmick versus a transformational company is going to be much more authentic in your marketing and it's going to go a lot more further in today's world. People are inundated with marketing. They don't want a gimmick. They connect on emotional connection and they're going to feel resonate. They resonate with the truth of your authentic marketing or not. So please put in the comments if you have any questions about this, by the way, as I keep going. Um, if you have any questions about transactional versus transformational. Um, so transactional work culture is where people will show up and they're more likely to just view that they're trading their time for dollars. It can lead to lower engagement less innovation they may not be as likely to speak up if they see room for improvement or something that's wrong because if if they view that this i'm only here to get paid for this they're not considering the bigger mission and purpose of the company versus a transformational work culture and no matter the size of your team even if you have one assistant you can bring them on this journey of being transformational and it starts with being clear in your purpose and your mission a transformational environment enables workers and empowers them to focus what they're best at, but you also create safety and being able to talk about what weaknesses are because you're supporting them in their journey to getting better at what they're good at. You can invite more innovation and ideas. If your employees feel safe or your team feels safe to share, it can lead to greater innovation. If you're the business leader, you don't need to be the only one responsible for everything. You can create a culture that invites and empowers people to be a part of the journey with you. And that requires a shift in you and your leadership in saying, I'm embracing being transformational, which means that I am embracing and I am open to feedback and I'm opening. I'm open to seeing how we can be stronger as a team versus just one. It's looking at people as people and as a team versus how do I get a body in the door who can generate revenue? See the difference? And so what happens when you hire for transformational workplace versus transactional is you get a different kind of employee. A transactional employee says, I'm here to get paid. This is good enough. I'm just here to do my job. They may not see the connection between what you're doing and the greater mission or purpose. They can ignore problems. They say, not my problem. They've been more likely to make excuses, blame, or they might just go look for a new job if they feel that they're not heard. A transformational employee with that mindset is going to see the connection for how this job allows them to fulfill their values in life. They're going to find alignment. They're going to feel more purpose. 
more likely to stay longer, bring their fullest self to the job, take interest in the mission of the company. When problems occur, you're going to have healthier conflict resolution because people will seek to understand different points of view. Instead of saying, that's not my department, not my problem, they're going to say, how is a team, how do we solve this? So when you think transformational and you lead transformationally in your culture, you're going to get a different kind of employee and it's going to help raise the profits rooted in purpose because people are going to be united in that shared purpose. And if you're the leader of your company, this requires you and your leadership recognizing where you are doing a great job and where you have opportunity to take some of this away and make some shifts and transitions to become more of a transformational leader. So if you're leading with the question, who can I get cheapest to fill this need? That's transactional. I want to invite you to instead consider how can I find the, a type of worker that I desire to invest in? Outline, what are you looking for in that type of worker? What are the qualities and skills that they bring to the table and hiring for culture and skill set? hiring for both so that it's someone who really aligns on purpose. That's leading with two different ways of looking at it, right? It's one is just looking at how do I get someone cheap? The other is looking at how do I get someone that really aligns to our culture and sees the bigger vision and conflict resolution as a leader, you, if you're more transactional, you're just saying too bad. These are the rules, three strikes you're out versus transformational is opening up a conversation instead that says, how could we have handled this differently? How could you have handled this differently? It's taking time to invest in your team to empower them in their growth. So rather than telling them the way that things are, it's inviting a transformational experience to say, how can we learn and grow as a team? And it's bringing a different energy and perspective to how you lead as a leader of your company. So does anyone have any takeaways? I'd love to hear if from those areas, um, whether it's culture or the type of employee you are, or the type of leader you are, what's a transformation takeaway? What's one thing that you're going to lean into when you leave here or one growth opportunity that you're noticing? That's even a simple shift that can help you be more transformational as an organization. And again, transformation is purpose. It's that soul of your organization, plus building that culture and investing in the team and uniting on that purpose that leads to profits rooted in that purpose. It's flowing from instead of forcing on team members, right? It's saying we're all united from this place of purpose and we grow versus giving people rules and saying you were hired to do X, you need to do A, B, C or three strikes, you're out. See the shift? It's leading from purpose that flows to profits versus only looking at profits and trying to force on people how they make those profits. Okay. All right. So we're going to move into looking at some specific models and then we'll leave a few moments at the end for questions. So um, get any questions ready to make sure that we dive into those, some specific impact models. So here's some ideas for you to consider. And um, I'm referencing a fantastic book, Evolved Enterprise. There's a picture. I've got it right here because I love it so much. I'm always making sticky notes in it. And um, this book is about rethinking, reimagining, and reinventing your business to deliver meaningful impact and even greater profits, written by my friend Yannick Silver. Fantastic book. In the book, he outlines 11 different impact models. We're just going to touch on four today for you to think about if there's a model that really resonates with you. So buy one, give one is when you buy one, the company gives one. So one of the most popular examples is Tom's Shoes. With every pair of shoes that you purchase, Tom's gives a pair of new shoes to a child in need. It's one for one. And when they, so the company was started by um, the owner had, uh, the founder had been on a polo trip um, somewhere in South America and was really inspired and touched by children who are playing outside without shoes. And that's what gave him the inspiration to say, how can we get everyone to have a pair of shoes and came up with this model 
of buy one, give one. So every sh pair of shoes you buy is given to another pair is given to someone in need. And they even had a different unique look to the shoe, which also created more connection and purpose among the people who buy Tom's shoes. Because if you're a Tom's shoe supporter, you see other people with Tom's shoes, you make that connection. So buy one, give one is one very popular. Um, this is a popular example, an easy to comprehend model. You could have that model in your business. And second model to consider is to donate where you want to. It's letting your customers donate where they want to. So you could, um, every item you sell, you could say to a customer, hey customer, we're making a 10% donation on your behalf. You get to pick from one of these five places. There's different ways you can do it, right? So, or if you sell, let's say if there's a company that sells software seats um, or a managed IT service in a place of business, and for every business that buys, you know, they buy 50 seats, each of those seats, each of those people, they get to choose where a donation goes on their behalf. Here's an example of a candy company. Their way of doing it where you choose where your donation goes is based on the kind of candy you buy. Um, there's colors associated with it and it shows you where your donation is going, addressing seven key areas. So there's seven that are on the back of the... The label, that's why they're called Project 7 Candy. Now, an important thing to notice is that they lead with benefit to the customer, benefit to the market. Low carb, that should say low sugar, <laughs> plant-based. So they're leading with things that people want. Low carb, low sugar candy. They're not banking on, oh, because we're going to give money to a great cause, you're going to come buy our product. No, they got really clear on, what does the market want and need? And how do we have purpose woven into everything we do? See the difference? Often um, business owners I talk with, they say, well, we want to have a purpose element or we want to do good, but we don't want it to look like we're just touting what we do because we're trying to make sales. If that's how you're feeling, I just want to invite you to consider, okay, what does feel good? Right? What does feel good? A lot of times it's just this, these false beliefs beliefs we have. And even if someone has that opinion, oh, they're just promoting their, their partner, their cause to make themselves look good, that's that person's problem, right? You can be a company that says, I'm gonna make all these profits and keep them for myself, or I'm gonna make all these profits and have a, a purpose element, which is better. I am much more willing to take the risk of people saying, oh, she's just touting the amazing work they do to make herself look good. I'm willing to take that risk to actually make a difference in the world because I, you can make a much bigger difference with people than those few naysayers. And there's this theory that says, or you probably heard it, that for every um, one negative memory, you need to have 10 positive. It's the same way when we're leading with purpose. You might hear one negative comment, but do not allow that to drown out all the purposeful work you're doing. So I started on my phone a folder where I take screenshots when clients or members of the community say something positive about how our work made a difference. And I started capturing that. I used to print them and keep them in a box. Now I keep them on my phone. And I do that because when sometimes when we get negative feedback, automatically we want to go 10 steps back. We want to self-doubt. We want to say, oh, I should never have tried this purpose thing because somebody is saying that I'm just trying to make myself look good. We need to remember to center all the impact you're making, the difference you're making in people's lives and allow those stories to be louder than the other ones, okay? So I just want to make sure we're very clear in that, that it is better to do something purposeful than to keep ourselves small for fear of some person on the sidelines having something to say. Brene Brown has a great quote about it. I don't know exactly how it goes, but it says something like, don't listen to the people who aren't in the ring doing it with you. It's something like that. If they're not in the ring, living it, doing it, trying to make a purposeful impact on the world, we don't care about their opinion, all right? So that was the second, was um, allowing people to choose where their impact goes. A third model is source matters really thinking about where you're sourcing in your supply chain, where you're getting your products. So Patagonia uh, has been committed for years to ethical raw materials. They even had a campaign that was all about don't buy more, don't buy this jacket. They are really committed to reducing, repairing, reusing, recycling. And they created a sustainable apparel coalition with a number of other big um, 
companies like Walmart's a part of it, other big um, retail stores and source. They are transparent in where they source their materials and they were willing to say, we're going to get ethical raw materials, even if it costs more, but we're going to manage the price to the consumer because this is what we're committed to in where we source everything that we sell to you. Icebreaker clothing is another one that sources um, merino wool that's natural from lambs. Their website is just fun and cute to look at where they're super transparent in every step of the journey. They're so clear on their supply chain, the product, the animals, the five freedoms of the lambs. You can see how the lambs are treated, how they're raised ethically. And so again, source, they're being so super transparent and clear about where the product comes from, how people are treated, how the animals are treated. Fourth model, we're gonna keep going so we have a few minutes for questions. Empowered employment. A couple examples of empowered employment as a way of creating impact. Miracle Couriers in India employs people who are deaf. And um, the win-win here is that they have a delivery service and that um, often people who are deaf are better at visual cues because they rely on visually on maps. And so this was an amazing win-win for the company, the people they were hiring and the customers. And also a challenge in India is a lack of resources for um, hearing impaired or anyone with a disability. So this company was created to give gainful employment to people who are willing, capable, want to work. And then when they do their delivery, they leave an info sheet about how people can engage with people who are deaf. And so this again is, it's not about, it's not about being charitable. It's saying these people have this greater skill, they're gonna have better visual memory and we need people who can deliver in a huge city. That's what it looks like to have purpose baked in, in a win, win, win. And it's not from a charitable low vibe place. It's saying we're gonna see disability not as a negative, we see this actually as a strength and this is the strength of these individuals. The next one is ultra testing and they call themselves ultranauts. And I love that they create that united culture name around it. And so they uh, employ cognitively diverse teams. More than 75% of their professionals are on the autism spectrum. And so they have testing that needs to be done on software that can be a repetitive task. And people with autism or Asperger's have the ability to stay focused on repetitive tasks, which makes them highly skilled in an amazing workforce to be gainfully employed doing this work. And this company is an example that they're showing how purposefully they are providing empowered employment to people who otherwise may not be empowered, um, employed. And they are showing how to create workplaces that embrace diversity as a, as a blueprint that others might follow. So as a recap, these are just a few, just four of the 11 outlined here. Buy one, give one. You could set that model up. You could let people choose where a donation goes, thinking about your sourcing or empowered employment. So I want to, if anyone has questions, please put them in the chat while I summarize. And I want to put up a screen with my information. Um, please put your questions on there. We can stay a couple minutes long. As a recap, find the heart of the brand by finding you. There's your purpose right? And then you want to look at the purpose of the business. Your purpose gives voice to the business, but what's the business of the purpose? What's that, what's that business doing in the world? What's the purpose for the culture, for the clients, for the global impact? How can you be more transformational, less transactional? And what are some the models that you might consider for your own business? So a couple things that you can consider right now, simple things that you can do and put into action while I, I watch for questions here. You can get clear on your mission statement. Getting clear on your mission statement helps align everybody on your purpose. You can be more intentional with who and where you're buying from. That might mean spending more. This is something we do all the time as a company. I paid more to go to local shops versus buying on Amazon because uh, there's, we've, believe that that is better for workforce sustainability and we want to ensure that our small businesses are thriving. Empowered employment. Are there ways that you can think about engaging talent differently? Distribution channels. How can you use your voice right now from social media and on your email list? 
to raise awareness around something that's really important. And I'd love to hear your ideas. If there's, what's the one thing that you're taking away from this talk today? One thing that you're going to put into action to be more purpose driven. And I see, um, I love that I got some feedback on here. Um, people are sharing one things that they're going to put into action are instead of taking a customer's problem, you're going to flip the script and focus on what's the outcome that's possible for that customer. That allows you to make it a more transformational experience and it allows you to sell your product for more money because you're focused on what's the outcome that's possible for your customer versus saying, well, I'm going to sell you an hour of my time for $100. We don't want people buying time. We want people buying an outcome, right? So I've got some free gifts for you. My email is here. If you um, would like to set up a consult with a member of our team or if you have questions and we are becoming soul seed, but the, the website's not up yet. So we've still got my previous two websites up where you can still get some free gifts. The first one is five steps to building your brand. The next one is three steps to finding your authenticity. So looking at from two different angles and um. Continuing with some of the shares in the comments, it's not about the critic. It's about, oh, I love that. The credit belongs to the person who's actually in the arena. Yes. So if there are any questions, please put them in the chat. And also anyone who's brave to share, I'd love to hear your one takeaway that you're taking from this and finding yourself that you're going to start putting into motion to come into more alignment with your purpose whether that's you personally in your team culture and how it's showing up with customers, if it's global or if it's thinking about how you want to have more impact in the community and not so much through that lens of I make this money. So then I donate. It's looking at what's the win, 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 right? That what we do can really have baked in purpose that serves all the parties involved. And thank you all for being here. I love your feedback. I love your comments. And if there's no questions, then I think we're going to wrap it up. I'll turn it back to Andy. Thank you so much for that, Amber. Uh, again, a lot of great, great nuggets of information that were packed in there. Um, thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, we got some exciting news. So Amber will be back. Uh, so just about quarterly this upcoming year. Her next event, I think I have it down right here, is April 27th, if that's... Just want to make sure, but that'll be live soon on our on our website. Uh, excuse me, April thirteenth is what I have down here. Um, so really excited for for uh, the continuation of uh, the, uh, the the subject matter that she talked about today. Um, a couple other things too. If you really enjoyed the event um, that you tuned in this morning and were curious about some of our other offerings that we have coming up, you can do so probably right where you're viewing this today, right on our Facebook page. So go ahead and press the events tab as well as our upcoming events. You also have the ability to go back to uh, just about a year now, actually. So the end of March of 2020 is when we start putting out our virtual content pretty much daily. You can go back and comb through our uh, archive of events. We're also working on transitioning everything over to a YouTube page as well, too. Um, so you can go ahead and view some of the events there as well. With that being said, we'll go ahead and cap it there right now. It doesn't look like there's any other comments or questions coming in. Uh, last one from Jennifer right here. Thank you so much, Amber. This has been so inspiring and giving me such momentum for the business I'm planning to launch. Um, thank you, Jennifer, Fantastic. again. For, for one thing it. I will just add that, um, you know, if anyone wants to continue this journey, please reach out. We do have programs that we make available at all different price points and ways of, um, helping people from startup to if you are going through a brand evolution, a brand um, re-strategizing. We have, so we've got offers available. So reach out if you are in that process of launching something, growing or pivoting. There may be ways we can support you in that journey. I wouldn't go ahead for any any viewers who are tuning in uh, after the, the stream was done here uh, to, to have Amber's email address in the comments as well, too. Uh, with that being said, though, we'll go ahead and cap it right there. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Amber. We will see you all next time.